All right, so joining me now in our studio, which also doubles up as our conference room, Maine State Catholic Central Baseball Coach Dylan Rankin. Dylan, happy Friday. How are we feeling today? Uh, I wish I was feeling a little bit warmer, but, you know, that's Michigan for you, but I'm feeling pretty good. So. <sighs> you and me both. So, well, I know it's freezing now, but we're getting started baseball season. I mean, just what's the overall excitement with the Sabres this season? Yeah, you know, um, we're getting after it. You know, we've been outside as much as we can this week, so... Um, that's a part of playing baseball in, in northern Michigan. You know, you get outside when you can. Yeah, ground balls, fly balls, getting those arms loose, you know. So just working hard from the start. Now, remind me, I know you lost a couple of seniors last year. Calvin Clinton's obviously a big piece, but talk to me who you have coming back. Who are you excited for this year? Yeah, coming back. Um, we have quite a few coming back. We lost a few. Um, but, you know, uh, Lee is going to be – Lee Pizana, he'll be our only senior, so he's coming back. Um, we've got most of our eighth graders. Um, uh, let's see here. Um, Nathaniel Barnett, he'll be a freshman. Andrew Hibbs, a freshman. Landon Kequam, freshman. Brandon Brindle, freshman. Um, so those guys, we're still young, obviously. We're still young. Um, but those guys are coming back. You know, Tyler Halliard, he's our only sophomore. Um, Riker and Nathan will be our juniors. Um, so we're still we're still a young team, man. But um, you know, guys are gonna come back and, and they know kind of what I expect from them. So um, yeah, we'll just yeah. <laughs> so obviously, so it's a young roster, but all these young pieces are coincidentally enough kind of experience like your last season. I mean, how does that play into the how? So how does that factor into how you handle the season? Yeah, I mean, uh, everybody has has experience. Um, and you know, I, I already said it, but you know, I expect a lot from them. Um, I understand that that they're young, but uh, you know, you look at you look at the kids who were eighth graders last year. Um, they played. You know, it's not like they were eighth graders in the dugout. They were eighth graders on the field. Uh, they were getting abs. Um, we had kids pitching. I mean, um, I remember Nathaniel Barnett pitching, Andrew Hibbs pitching, um, and those guys will see time on the mound. For sure, for sure. This year, uh, Landon, lefty, he'll see some time on the mound. I mean, pretty much what I'm looking at with the guys that I have, uh, everybody's gonna be pitching a little bit. So, um, just as a little, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, preview. You know, we, we don't have a we don't have a guy who's gonna go out there and and strike a bunch of people out. Um, so everybody's gonna pitch a little bit. You know, and hopefully we can be a be a ground ball, fly ball type of team. So that's 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 kind of what I'm looking at. Does it feel weird only having one senior this year? It is a little weird. It, it is a little weird. Um, and even it's it's more weird, I think, because my first year coaching, Lee was an eighth grader, I believe. Uh, so I've had him since the beginning, and now here he is, a senior. Um, and his game has evolved. Uh, he's gotten better. Um, and, you know, I, I look to him for for leadership, to be a leader on the team. Um, and he's always led by example. I've told the story before, I think last year, I don't remember to who, but the kid laid out for two or three fly balls as an eighth grader in right field. You know, he'll do the same thing as a senior this year, except, you know, he'll probably play a little first base. Uh, you know, he's not going to be out in the outfield too much. But, um, so, yeah, it, it's it's weird, and it's more weird because I've had him since the beginning. Um, but, you know, he, he, he should help us out, certainly. So I've watched this group in particular in football season take a leap. I saw this group now in, base, in basketball season take a leap. What's it going to take for this group in baseball season now to take a leap as well? Yeah, um, that's a great question. I think I've said it, and these guys, these guys know, trust the process, right? What, what I'm trying to do, what we are, we are trying to do, um, focus on the fundamentals of baseball. If we really focus on the fundamentals of baseball, catching the ball with two hands, fielding the ground ball correctly, knowing the situation, knowing how many outs there are. I mean, just the most basic stuff, fundamentally, um, we, we can, I think, make that leap. Um, you know, we really, really want to take pride on our defense. Um, and, and, you know, we'll figure out how to hit the ball. We'll manufacture runs. Um, you know, that's, that's going to be our goal. We'll, we'll try to manufacture runs where we can, but, you know, limit the errors, you know, things like that. Um, 
I can go on and on, but I don't want to talk too much about it. So. Gotcha. Um, I think that'll help us make the leap, though. Yeah. The fundamentals. Yeah. The beautiful, the beautiful slash incredible challenge I think every coach in Manistee Catholic Central has is dealing with that small talent pool. I mean, kids talking eighth grade through seniors, I mean, we're talking less than 100 kids. For you, how do you manage that challenge? Uh, how do you manage that challenge? You know, you, 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 you look at what you have and um, you ask yourself, okay, where, where can I take this team? How far can I take this team? Where can I take this individual athlete? Um, and if you look, you know, if you got a, a senior, you got one year with them, what can you do with them? If you got a freshman, you got a couple years with them. So from a talent pool perspective, you know, you take what you got and, and you, you, you work your butt off as a coach to try to maximize that talent. Um, you know, a lot of these kids are not gonna, they're not gonna play fall baseball for certainly. Um, you know, some of them might play some baseball in the summer, um, but a lot of them are just going to kind of start doing some baseball stuff, um, you know, when we start doing four-man workouts. Um, so they're not playing year-round. Maybe they're probably not playing as much as they should in the summer. Um, so uh, you take what you got and you try to maximize it as best you can. I hope that kind of answers the question. I think it does. Um, but also, too, on the flip side of that, even though it's a small school, I mean, these kids see each other every day, and they, there's a chance to really get some good chemistry bonding in there. I mean, oh, yeah. where do you feel the chemistry of this group is at right now? Yeah, I mean, that's I taught at MCC, you know, for, I don't know, four years. It's a it's a family atmosphere. You know, you grow up with the kids, um, and, and the kids, too, they grow up with each other. You know, they were with each other in fifth grade. They were with each other in eighth grade. They are with each other in high school. Um, and so there is sort of that tight-knit, uh, you know, family, you know, good chemistry sort of atmosphere. And I think that helps us, certainly. Um, you know, we look out for each other. Uh, you know, they... I, I'm, I'm always impressed um, by how motivated they are. Um, you know, it's my job to keep them motivated. But, you know, a lot of times, you know, they're ready to go. And I think that's a testament to just um, being, they're in school all day with each other. And I think, you know, okay, now it's time to go to practice. You know, hey, how, how you been, whatever. You know, they talk at lunch, so on and so forth. So it, it's good. It's good. The chemistry will help, and, and, and the chemistry is good. Gotcha. I, I know, obviously, some coaches still get wins and losses. That's kind of the big factor. So I'm kind of looking some other ways. For you as a coach, how do you determine success on a daily basis? How do you determine success on a daily basis? I wish I had my book I'm reading about success that John Wooden wrote right now, and I'd just read you that definition. But, I mean, uh, I'm trying to think. I just I just said it, too. I just texted my grandpa. Um, it's doing your best when your best is needed, you know? And, and if that means we win that particular game, great. Um, if we lost, for example, you know, did we do our best when our best was needed? Um, then, then you can walk away, then you can walk away knowing that you know you did the best that you could do, which which is a success to an extent. Maybe not, um, maybe not on the uh, uh, the wins and losses board, but um, you know, you can take you can take that and and go into the next practice with momentum. You can take that and go into the next game with momentum. A lot of a, a lot of things in life, you got to have a short memory, especially with baseball. Baseball is a game of life, um, and you got to have a short memory. So, quite frankly, if we win a game or we lose a game, enjoy it, and then it's over with. You know, move on to the next thing. So, success for me is, you know, I, yeah, I'll stick with that. You know, doing your best when your best is needed. Um, and we can go off of that. Maybe I'll text you a definition. You can put that in the podcast somehow. <laughs> uh, I appreciate that. But, Dylan, thank you so much for your time, man. Best luck to you this season. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Mm-hmm.